Welcome to Beans and Breakdowns, a podcast dedicated to bridging the gap between specialty coffee and the heavy music community. On this episode, I'm joined by Rob Ortiz from Dear God. So grab a fresh cup of coffee and wake the fuck up. What's going on, Caffeinated Crew? On this episode, I'm joined by Rob from Dear God, Flower City in the house. Once again, how's it going? I'm good. I'm chilling. It's a beautiful uh, Sunday, I think. I don't know what day of the week it is ever, but I think <laughs> I think it's Sunday. So It feels like a Sunday. Yeah, it's nice. Relax. Yes, it's been chill. Nice little park day, drinking beers. Now we got to get coffee to balance out that nice little buzz. Mm-hmm. Let's go. So uh, what you drinking on your side? Um, so I had um, uh, <laughs> oat milk latte uh, from this place called The Good Neighbor mm. down the road. Had it for the first time. It's pretty good. Um, I just I've been on, on my lattes this week, you know. I've been a hipster, you know, the, the yeah. oat milk latte. Um, Are you but, a non-dairy uh, person? You don't, you don't dairy? I can't do dairy. No, it gives me eczema. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. 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 Oh, I got, shit. I, yeah, I, I got like bad eczema. So like when I, when I drink fucking dairy, there's like this instant reaction. <laughs> um, so I try to stay away from that. It also fucks up my stomach. So yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I got like, I probably got like a few diseases, but like, I haven't been to a doctor in like five years. So, you know, this is what it is. I'll tell you what I'm drinking. I'm drinking Penelope. I picked it up in the UK when I was there for outbreak. I don't know where it's from, uh, mm-hmm. but it, I bought it in Manchester. This is their uh, micro lot. It's Finca El Magdal, and it is a uh, Colombian anaerobic. Tastes like guava, blackberry jam, vanilla. There's some other shit, but all I taste is uh, blackberries. So it's pretty good. Sick. Hell yeah. Yeah, no. In terms of like coffee and shit, like <laughs> honestly, it's like I feel like I can never just like have a coffee and be like, like something like I could tell the difference between shit coffee and like good coffee but like mm-hmm. all good coffee to me I'm like that's a good coffee but I yeah. can't be like like I'm not one of those guys that's like oh this got hints of like berries or like whatever you know what I mean yeah, yeah, yeah. same with like wine like I drank so many goddamn wine bottles in my life and still <laughs> like I could tell the difference but I can't like process like like how to how to um word what I'm tasting like I'm not right. that type of 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 person i mean like even with beer it's like i can name you the beers i drink day to day that i'm like oh that's a good beer but i'm never like oh man that beer is like like that that colch is oh that's I, i'm taste of yeast and like i don't i don't yeah. know that shit like to be honest like my day to day is like i wake up me or my girlfriend we we make like coffee in the fresh pr- uh french press we fucking mm-hmm. uh grind up the beads usually like president's choice dark roast or like some tim hortons dark roast dark roast though that's, yeah uh, yeah i can't do the medium he- roast that's heavy duty man not in terms of caffeine just in flavor yeah yeah i mean i prefer like a like a darker coffee um and usually usually i just drink black like we'll just have like mm-hmm. black iced coffees like um I don't know. I don't know. I like, I guess I'm, I'm the type of person that's always like trying to limit certain stupid little things like in my life. Like I try to regulate everything. So like black coffee, I I, like always was trying to like only drink black coffee lately. I've just been like, fuck it. I've I've been drinking the lattes and enjoying that. But like usually just like, yeah, black dark roast coffee. I don't care where it's from. I just, you know, I'm just trying to wake the fuck up, you know, trying to get the fuck up. Yeah. So you're like a coffee as fuel person. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. I'll, 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 I'll come back like fucking four coffees a day, you know? God damn. Yeah. So I'm an asshole. That's like, Oh, I taste uh, nectarine, uh, bergamot. I've never had a bergamot in my whole life, but I know what it tastes like. You know, that kind yep. of bullshit. Yep. Yep. Um, but it just, I, I guess I chose that for myself. I kind of 
fucked off down that rabbit hole. And here I am now talking to people about coffee and from Europe and shit. I don't know. I don't, I don't know <laughs> why I did this to myself. I, I much prefer to be like French press is cool. I just need to wake up. I need to do work. Like I don't need yeah. to spend $50 on a bag of coffee. Yeah. But, uh, these are the choices we make in life. Yeah, what's, your, I, what's your favorite uh, beer right now though? Uh, I mean, I, I usually drink like lagers, like okay. Kolsch's, Pilsner's, um, any You're of those are cool boy. with me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, so I work at a place where I can drink on the job. <laughs> I work <laughs> at a fucking, I work at a pizzeria where like there's like a bar within it. Nice. And we get, we get our drinks for like three bucks uh, a drink, which are, they're like $10 drinks. And also like, because like I'm tight with the bartenders, like usually they'll just slide me them. So like... Mm. Um, I'll usually drink like a, like a beyond the pale Kolsch over there. Okay. Um, or, uh, or I'll just have like, a, like if I'm like just chilling, like at the cottage or some shit, fucking Miller high life, champagne of beers. That's right. Or fucking. Yeah. <laughs> some, some fucking Miller high life or like a Modelo. Like I feel like Modelo is like, just like when, it, when I'm kicking it with like some fucking Latinos, you know, Mexican some, lager, yeah, you can't go yeah. wrong, man. Yeah, like every time I'm with like some fucking Mexicans or some shit, they always pull out the Modellos. Like, um, yeah, I fuck with the Modellos or even just like Pilsners, you know. I feel like ever since I watched like Fubar, I've been, I've just okay. been drinking Pilsners. Like, cause <laughs> like, cause like, <laughs> it just feels like when I drink a Pilsner, I just feel like such a fucking like piece of shit Canadian, you know what yeah. I mean? I don't know. Usually I that. that. Yeah. yeah. So, Miller High Life is 100% the best beer. I will fight you. Me and Kyle from Gavel will come. We will fight. Uh, so, yeah, he's it's, it's great because every time we play Hamilton, he's got like a 2-4 of Miller High Life's waiting for you. It's great. Yeah, yeah. I'll um, do that for you in Brampton. Oh, Fucking, shit. <laughs> uh, the reason I got into Miller's was because like my guitarist, Jesse, like the dude who like tracks all the Dear God shit with me, he was like a huge fucking like miller fan like at the studio like recording the album and shit we would just smoke darts like constantly fucking pound back millers like he would always yeah get like a two four like every two days you have to re-up and shit like every time i go to the studio i just get fucked up and record um but like uh uh now it's it's crazy because jesse's like pretty much like sober i mean he's smoking Fuck. cigarettes but but like he switched up and like he lost like 20 pounds, bro. Like off of chilling on the Millers. And I'm like, holy shit. I mean, I'm trying It'll to gain it. weight, but yeah. like he's doing good, but he's a guy that got me into Millers and like now I'm drinking him alone, but you know what? He's, he's got his non-alcoholics on tour. He's drinking like non-alcoholic Heineken's. He's Dude, chilling. The Corona Sunbrew. Oh yeah. The Corona are good. Actually the, yeah, the non-alcoholic yeah. ones. Yeah. I don't yeah. know what they're doing, but it's good. Yeah, I don't think I would ever drink a non-alcoholic, to be honest. But um, maybe like when I'm like, oh, it's time, like it's time, it's time to stop. You know, yeah. then then maybe I'll I'll resort to that as like a necessity. But like, I just feel like if like I don't even like love beer, like or how it makes me feel. I just like I'll just drink it. You know, it's just like the whenever act of I can. drinking something. Right? yeah yeah <laughs> and i like i have such a weak stomach that i i drink beer so slowly like i just like it takes me like forever to drink one beer that i feel like drinking a beer for me is just like i just get to spend like a half an hour with something in my hand you know right. what i mean it's like an oral <laughs> fixation but like with my hands you know gotta have some you know like if i'm at a show without like a beer in my hand like i i feel like the worst social anxiety like i like i don't want to be around anyone you know damn that's how I feel when I'm at a show and I, I don't have a beer that I feel obligated to mosh. Yeah. Yeah. That's, like I yeah. feel like, yeah. That's what makes <laughs> you so angry, right? Like, it's like, that's what, <laughs> that's what right. you hate mosh when you don't have beer in you, you know? That's why the straight edge kids, they go the hardest, you know? They Brown hate killers. moshing. Yeah. Jake, he's fucking doing spin kicks and shit. Like, he's just like, he's hate moshing, you know? Yeah. Just gotta all let the it clone out. guys, fucking all crowd killers. They'll take yeah. you out. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. <laughs> It's fucked up. It's fucked up shit, you know. I've started. I've stopped drinking at shows a lot just because I like being more present. Especially if I have to perform, like I feel like beer fucks me up. Yeah. Uh. So yeah. Now I've been moshing a lot more, but now it's made me very aware that I'm too old to be mm -hmm. moshing like that. Yeah. So yep. it's like a vicious cycle. 
Yeah. I mean, I, I can, I'll mosh either way. I like this year, especially, I feel like I like, I mosh almost every band I see, even if it's like a five band bill, like at least one song of, of the set. Like I've been like getting better at moshing too, you know, like, mm -hmm like deadbolt fucking mile and they used to make fun of my two-step you know yeah but like that'll do it though <laughs> that'll do it and and i was like i was like what the fuck you practicing in like a mirror or some shit and they're like yeah we do that and then and then i started doing that and um you know like my girlfriend's like looking at me funny like when i'm doing it but you know what it doesn't matter bro like she's gonna learn one day too you know that's it you gotta just get good to, i keep trying to get my wife to mosh but she won't do it yeah but like, everybody I mean, wants to see it i mean my my girl like she could two-step she's like she's like done it a couple times it shows i always try to push her in but i feel like a lot of girls are just too scared when there's like the big boys in the in the pit but like i just like i tell them i'm like look i'm a little guy too like i weigh just as much as half the girls at these shows and i'm i'm still out there you know it's all about the mentality you know yeah yeah hold it down yeah, yeah for real Plus, it, I don't know how it is in the GTA. I've seen a couple of the dudes from there, and they're scary. But I mean, Hamilton. You go to like a Hamilton show. You go to like a Spirit of Vengeance show. It's like a, it's hard to mosh at a Spirit of Vengeance show, bro. Like I, I just know. Like I see the guys in those pits, and I'm like, my arm. Like even if I like did a fucking uh, like a windmill, my arm just interacts with one of those guys arms it's gonna snap you know yeah, what i mean dead. like yeah, yeah you got like a like a 250 pound guy like my shit's gonna snap like like i was watching spirit of vengeance at the 10 for 10 and we were gonna play later and i was like fuck i love these songs i want to show up for this band like i fuck with this band but like i just like looking in that pit and i'm like how am i supposed to play bass after i mosh for spirit of vengeance you know like how like how am i gonna like do flame will not be able to have a bassist for like a few months if i mosh for that band so it's like i just look at the the sacrifice you know i have to make and i think twice you know take one for the team i'm in the back and i'm like have my arms crossed and it's like you know everyone's tweeting about those guys i'm like what do you want me to do you know you want me to play in do flame you want to see do flame one more time or you or you want you want this shit to be over you know for the next four months it's like no one wants that you know yeah See, you're smart though, because I, I did mosh and I had a band and I was playing drums and I fucked my hands up. I, I broke this hand. I fucked some other shit up and we had to cancel like three shows. So is yeah. that what you want? You want to do yeah. flame to cancel shows? Yeah. Yeah. Or do you want to see mosh? I don't know. Exactly. Wake up. It's the struggle. Wake up, people. <laughs> um, First of all, is is Dear God a hardcore band? um i don't even know how to answer that to be honest because like i would say like i would say at this point yeah you know um i wouldn't be afraid to to label us as like a mm -hmm. hardcore band um i would say other people would be weary probably of, of calling us a hardcore band but um i remember even at the jump calling myself a hardcore band and like people just like i feel like that was before hardcore really started popping off again mm -hmm. and there wasn't really like a hardcore scene in toronto at the time um was it when, when millspec when, was like kind of the only one really doing it, it was like the two steppy bands i mean pretty much but like i i hadn't even like heard of millspec at the time you know like like i feel like and they're also like not really like Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think they're like Toronto. I think they're a mix of like kind of some of them are Niagara, yeah. Buffalo, right? But, but, um, I mean, I came into like the music game out here, like when, uh, it was mostly like punk, like hardcore punk. Like I, I, I feel like when I was like 17, 18, and I was going to like Faith Void shows, like I was going to see like shit, mm -hmm. right? Like, um, that type of scene was what toronto was at the time but i was in a hardcore since i was like in fucking middle school on and off you know what i mean like i was i was going through like phases and phases but like i was in a hardcore since i was like 12 you know what i mean mm -hmm. but um when dear god started like i wasn't i wasn't trying to like label myself anything to be honest i wanted to do like the mixture of like punk and like hip-hop influence because like that's all i really listened to right um and i feel like 
when the hardcore scene started popping off, I got really excited and I was like, okay, this is exactly what I was trying to go for. But like, there wasn't really like, there wasn't really like a label for it in my head at that time. Um, and, uh, I mean, like, I got more into, like, classic hardcore, like, after high school and shit and, like, right. gone through, like, the whole history of it and, like, really, like, dialed in, like, what hardcore is and what it was. Um, and, uh, like, I mean, like, Mateo also was making, like, punk, like, old school hardcore, like, esque shit. Mm -hmm. And um, and around when we started making the Do Flame shit is when we kind of dialed in, like, we want to be like a hardcore band or like that's what Mateo was going for. And I was all for that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but dear God, like I always wanted to just be like a weird experimental band. Um, but nowadays it's like, because I'm so immersed in hardcore, like my day to day involves like going to hardcore shows. All my friends are in hardcore bands. Like dear God consists of like hardcore members, right? Yeah. Like we got Michelle from influx. We got like, Mateo and do flame. It's like, like we, like, I, f I feel like my lifestyle is immersed by hardcore. Um, so the music I make now is definitely more influenced by old school, hardcore parts and stuff. I'm still like, I wouldn't consider myself like traditional hardcore, mm -hmm. but I would say I'm kind of trying to do like my own offshoot of hardcore and I'm right. trying to stay within the scene and stay like, you know, like tapped in with hardcore. Um, and like, uh, for that, all that, like, I would say, yeah, like I would say I would consider us like a hardcore band, but I feel like some people wouldn't. And like, that's fine. I feel like you can consider us whatever the fuck you want, but I don't know. It is what it is. I feel like I would consider myself a, a hardcore man. That's all it is. A hardcore you know? man. Hardcore, a hardcore. I would man say with a, a hardcore plan. <laughs> yeah, I would say hardcore kid, but now I'm realizing I'm like, bro, I'm like turning 23 soon. I feel like I shouldn't call myself a hardcore oh, kid. God you know damn, that? bro, I'm like fucking 30, man. Make me feel so but, old. But you're man. a hardcore man as well. You know, it's like I feel like I'm just in that pool now, where it's like I'm a hardcore adult. You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Depending on 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 the people around you, you could be kid or man. You know, mm -hmm. I look at some of the members that. I share and they're like, you know, getting close to like 40 and shit. And it's like, okay, that's a hardcore man. Yeah. But, yeah. True. So, true. But all that being said, I mean, I, I do think that what you're saying about some people not calling it, I know that there's labels like emo rap. I don't think that that's <laughs> at all yeah, like what either do flame or dear God is at all. Cause I've talked to some people on that side and it's much more like, there's a much more iconic sound and they're not really doing the band thing. Yeah. I think something that sets, you know, both do flame and dear God apart is you guys have members, you guys play shows live with a full band, but mm -hmm. in the studio, it's definitely much more like a produced sound, which is yeah. really cool. So yeah. I have never heard actually either artist like live. I've yeah. only heard recording. So I really can't wait to hear it live, but from what I've heard from the dead bull guys from Milan, from clones, like all my friends, they're like, this is some next level, like new wave shit. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, like a lot of people called us like, or still call us like new metal. Right. And it's like, which is funny because like <laughs> me and Mateo, like we're, we're not like new metal fans really. Like we don't really fuck with new metal like that. There's right. like, <laughs> there's certain, like, it's, it's like, nostalgic shit you know like shit you listen to on like wwe when you're a kid right it's like yeah yeah but but like i was just i was always just trying to merge like the the punk with like the hip-hop and like but i i wasn't going for new metal you know like i wasn't trying to sound like corn or like limp Bizkit, but like it just came out the way it did and uh and you know like people call it new metal and it's like fine if you want to call it that which is funny because like actually jesse in our band he's like starting a new metal band like on purpose just to be and like this is what new metal actually is yeah yeah and he's like he's doing the whole thing like he's trying to he's trying to go full new metal it's called clockwise oh fuck. Uh, yeah they're dropping a tape soon they're they're trying to get me to spin in the band <laughs> please and, do it like please yeah. that would be so dope like we need more spinners in the bands. Yeah, yeah. But like his, but even clockwise is like, you listen to it, it's like hardcore parts, you know, like Jesse's yeah, just yeah. like used to hardcore. So it's like, 
it's all like two stepping parts but it's like he's going full new metal and he like they'll label it that and like it's just like it's awesome because it's like who fucking cares you know what i mean like people like will make fun of new metal and shit but it's like if you're just doing it for fun it's like it's kind of it's kind of dope you know what i mean yeah i feel like none of those new metal bands were actually like serious and it just kind of caught with like certain people like yeah, it, it yeah. got really big for a while but like i would i would say fred durst if you ever went up to him and was like all oh, clowned on him for you know being a new metal man he'd probably like laugh about it like he probably yeah, like yeah, yeah this is like a fucking joke like, it is what it is yeah i mean like jesse jesse like fucking loves limp biscuit like we were on we were on fucking uh we were on like hinge and shit for him on tour and like uh and he was just he was just like he would text girls like just limp biscuit that's it he just the worst riz ever you know yeah but just limp biscuit um so he's like a real fan of limp biscuit but like <laughs> if i if i were to say my favorite new metal i'd probably say like i actually still love like system of a down Okay. Um, I don't know if rage rate, I don't know if rage constitutes as new metal, but I guess they were in that vein. Um, I feel like, you know what, like with dear God, the way I would label it would be the same way that you would label a band like rage or like That's Beastie Boys. I, would, I hear that. I for you know? sure hear that because it's like, it's like the, the mixture of like hip hop cadences with like a live band, but mm -hmm. it's not necessarily like nineties new metal. You right. know what I mean? And um, with this last album that I did, like, I was going for, like, check your head, like, Beastie Boys, but, yeah. like, on crack, you know? Like, I was just trying to make, like, a more, like, live, hardcore version of check your head or, like, um, or, yeah, even some rage shit. I was just trying to make, like, some more, like, funky, like, rhythmic shit. Right. Um, but with, like, some live guitars, like, some shit where I can merge well within the context of like a hardcore bill and uh but like keep like my own kind of like style on there you know right yeah. yeah i definitely heard like listening to the punchline is definitely much more on the rage side because yeah i feel like the the guitar sounds that were being used like much more distorted mm -hmm. much more like live sounding drums and everything um and then comparing that to like the burbs it's yeah. so different but I, of course like a three-year gap you know yeah um but like when i remember when i heard bat house which is uh the single with you and, and do flame together doing it it's like i was like that's that's the shit like that's gonna be huge like that's yeah. gonna go mm. especially with you know like i hear that and i know people my age and older like it's really hit or miss like there's either people mm. that are like oh that shit's sick or it's like i don't understand it i don't get it that's not mm -hmm. hardcore. Those people can, you know, listen to Bane and that will be all they listen to. And that's fine. But <laughs> like, I think that especially like younger kids coming in on the TikTok wave and like finding out about like hardcore through like Paramore two-stepping and shit like that. Like, yeah, that's the shit that will catch. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, like we talk about this shit all the time. Like I talk about this shit with other people, like within other hardcore bands, you know, I've talked about, about this, like with deadbolt and shit, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But like, like, and those guys are like really like classic hardcore, right? Like Seb fucking like hardcore punk, yeah. like, yeah, like yeah. 80 shit. Yeah. And they're the type of guys that are like, yo, if it's not this, fuck you. And it's yeah. like, I respect that. And I respect that. And that's why I find it hilarious. Like that they fuck with me so much and I love it. And it's like, it's like to me like like i honestly like i don't really give a fuck about about like if people fuck with shit or not but like i like it's really funny to me because when i got on back on twitter and like i realized like all the hardcore kids like the discourse and shit on twitter like like i would talk to jake about it right he'd be like oh these people are making fun of these people for like their two-step or this person did this at a show and all this shit and like i just like the first thing in my head i was like is this like what like traditional hardcore is now is it like people policing each other on what's yeah. cool and what's not and what's a proper two-step and who's allowed to listen and all this shit like people will be like you came here from TikTok. it's like bro like 20 years ago you came to hardcore from myspace so yep. it's like it's just like people just like want to like hate on 
how people get into it shit like i i got into it young you know like i was listening to like fucking trash talk and like fucking um like title fight and like yeah i was listening to like all that shit when i was like 12 right it's like but i see people getting into hardcore when they're like 18 19 fucking whatever age and like i'm just like sick you know like it's dope like whenever you get into it how you get into it like we're all on the same fucking side it's like there's no point in like policing each other it's like that's kind of opposite of what this shit was made for you know at the end of the day it's like i think about the origins right like the origins of hardcore it's like like the original bands weren't thinking like oh we're doing our own thing oh that's cringe we shouldn't fucking like make some shit that sounds like like mainstream metal that's going on it's like these guys were guys trying to like make their own sound trying to dance with their own people do their own thing right and so when i think about like what um like dear god or do flame are doing i just see it as the same thing i'm like it's just us trying to make our own thing have our own friends dance to it have fun it's not about policing each other it's about just like being ourselves showing like who we are the people that we fuck with you know um and so i really i i think like the whole discourse is funny to me you know like because like i'll shit on some stuff you know like i'll shit on some stuff here and there you know i'm not a fan of like pop punk or anything you know <laughs> like yeah but i mean like there's like kids that like listen to pop punk and they're into hardcore and it's like i don't really give a shit you know what i mean yeah it's fine um, that's fine like i i we put you know hardcore bands play bills with fucking like pop punk bands sometimes like metal there's just some like yeah metal core post hardcore that's a little bit you know in in a weird realm you know Yo, but if, like if terror and dying fetus can tour together then anything can happen yeah right? for real so. you know <laughs> like i know people that were like hating on like fucking scowl playing with like limp biscuit and shit and i'm just like dude like like it's just like shut the fuck up bro like I, like I, like everyone's just kind of doing their own thing it's like the, the people that are talking about it aren't doing shit you know it's like people mm -hmm. that aren't doing good with their own band or they're not in a band you know what i mean because it's really like everyone should just be like elevating each other you know like if you're into the traditional shit like that's cool you know like do your thing yeah if you're into some new school shit that's cool you know if you found this shit through fucking tiktok it's like who cares it's like are we really gonna hate on every young kid that gets into hardcore through tiktok because it's like that's that's the easiest way to get exposed to it you know what i mean it's like like you're gonna hate on a kid that's like 12 years old that like found like mile end through fucking tiktok and comes to a show or are you gonna like respect that and be like sick you want to be a part of this you know when that, it's like we're like hardcore is a genre that could well phase out you know as soon as people my age get too old to go to shows and shit you know what i mean mm -hmm. like that could well like be over like mm -hmm. at any like any time it could die out so the fact that we're still gatekeeping and being elitist i don't know if it's so much necessary anymore like i don't know if it's so much like an issue you know what i mean like yeah. the more people we have coming to shows as soon as somebody sees it on tiktok wants to go to a show and they see like moshing like hard moshing for the first time mm -hmm. it's either going to scare them and they won't come back mm -hmm. or it's going to you know they get they'll get the bug and want to come yep. back and figure out what the fuck it is so it's kind of like its own way of gatekeeping you know what i mean you don't have to be yeah. an asshole to everybody let them figure it out for themselves if they want to be there mm -hmm. they'll be there if they don't they won't be there <laughs> so yeah i mean it's like polarizing enough you know like yeah. how many people on the street are really listening to hardcore it's like if someone decides in their brain this is my music i love this shit now i want to be a part of this it's like why tell them to fuck off you know what i mean like yeah it's just like not what it's about you know it's like not it you know but then there are the people that do come in they see an opportunity of like hardcore is hot right now i'm going to try to profit off of it and kind yeah. of imposter my way into it those mm -hmm. people can fuck off yeah 100 yeah. percent. Mm -hmm. so yeah for sure i see a bit of that sometimes and i'm like ah it's a little bit cringe <laughs> yeah no. but i mean i mean that that's it too it's like like there's cringe ass people it's like just fucking ignore them you know what yeah. i mean like and and it's like bands only get booked when people really like respect them it's like you know i don't know i i just don't give a fuck like people are gonna try to profit off of every little fucking thing they see you know that's what true. i mean like like people are gonna see like certain like you know what i mean like playboy cardi you know like we'll just like 
wear some fucking punk clothes and be like yo i'm punk right and it's like <laughs> honestly i don't even care like i don't give a fuck like if you're gonna do that and say you're punk like sure you know what i mean that doesn't eliminate the whole punk scene it doesn't discredit what punk is and what it was it's like right it's like do your fucking thing if, if you want to consider yourself that fuck it you know machine gun kelly's a fucking weirdo fucking pedophile wearing fucking punk clothes and acting like he's a fucking punk it's like it's like I like, does that really affect the scene? You know, not really, you know, he's no. going to appeal to his fans. He's going to like milk it, whatever, but like no point in stressing over it. It's just like, look ahead of you. How can you like make some positive change with the people around you? And like, how are you going to advance this with like, you know, the people around you, how are you going to put on for your people? And that's yeah. all it is, you know? That's sick. I, uh, I love that idea of bringing it back to like your scene, like bring it back to the people that you fuck with mm. and like, let that be what it is. I yeah. feel like you guys have done such a good job. Like myelin do flame, dear God, uh, now a hundred percent pure. Mm. I'm missing people. I know I am, but like the, the Brampton scene, it feels like has just really come up so much like on my radar in the past two years. Mm. Uh, cause you guys have just been putting on for your people. And that's dope. Mm. Like that's what the whole, not even hardcore, but like the scene in general, like underground music has always supposed to be. Yeah. I'm, I mean, we like, we like came up together, right. It's like, we, we weren't really fully accepted into any like hardcore scene right off the bat. You know what I mean? Like we were just like all into the same shit and we were all like, yo, if other people are doing it in other cities, like we can do it. And we did it. And like, you know, like people hate here and there, and like, you know, you hear shit here and there. And it's like, we just like fucking kept going. We we're like, fuck everyone. We're doing it our way. Mm -hmm. And like, it is what it is. If you don't fuck with it, then fucking don't show up. And like, who cares? You know what I mean? And I feel like that's why we've been getting the love is because we do shit our way and we have our own thing that doesn't compare to other hardcore scenes. And like, and people like, and now like hardcore scenes all around North America are kind of looking at us like, oh shit, like they're really doing it their way. They don't give a fuck. And that's what the the hardcore like spirit is about to me is like really not giving a fuck what people think about you and just doing shit your way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and that's, that's what got us to where we are. And so it's like, it's been really sick to see like nowadays, like I feel like, I feel like back in the day I could walk into a, a, a room in like a random, like, you know, like in, in a GTA city, um, for like a hardcore show and people would be like, who's the fucking guy I think he is. You know what I mean? And like, and like nowadays it's like, I walk into the room and everyone knows me and like, you know, everyone, I shake everyone's hand. Everyone fucks with me. Like, you know, I'd be, I'd be dancing with everyone and every band. It's like, it's like people know what Brampton is. They know what we represent and uh and it's it's all like mutual love you know like we we got love for like the hamilton hardcore scene toronto hardcore scene like montreal hardcore scene fucking niagara even fucking like chicago now like yeah, yeah. you know everywhere we go we just make our friends and we show what we're about and you know it's cool to see like people's positive like reactions and you know and you know you just kind of got got to get through the thick of it before you know you get you get the respect you get the nods and and uh and then it makes it all worth it you know in the end for sure well uh i know that you guys y'all released the the punchline in may may yeah i think it was may yeah yeah um what 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 else do you have going on just came off a bit of a tour with mile end uh but what's on your radar for the rest of the year so uh dear god i feel like has gone through like fucking <laughs> it's gone through a lot of <laughs> shit like like i was with a uh an independent label um back in the day and uh so we got like money to make that first ep mm -hmm. then during the pandemic shit went south and there was no shows and all that shit and i was fighting with them a lot and like it became just like a fucking screaming match and uh they didn't want me to put out the hardcore shit and i was like go fuck yourselves and then so i we stopped working with them and um we started working with uh like dine alone for a bit yeah um and they helped us out for a bit and they were cool um we dropped the punchline with them 
but like now we're kind of going in like an independent direction which means like it's all out of my pocket from this point forward so um and it's and it's like the band like i've always done the production right like and then just like played with the band um so it's all my money now and i'm working with um jesse still engineering it so um i'm gonna have to we're gonna have to figure out how we structure it moving forward but um we're gonna try our best to just like get shit out this year and keep keep going and doing the thing um i'm planning on doing like maybe like two separate eps maybe one that's like more classic hardcore more like just like dancey um and then doing an ep that's more weird and experimental and electronic and just like showing kind of both sides of what dear god is Mm -hmm. um uh but i think i'm gonna drop like a couple singles in the meantime that aren't necessarily like hardcore songs i got like one song that's like more kind of back to the roots of like it's like jungle kind of like oh, made fuck. But, yeah i made when i was like in la with this guy italian leather um and um maybe this one song i made that's more of like just like a deep cut like it's a sad song you know i made uh out in la with this guy at lex um good friend of mine he made the dungeon with us he's got his own dope music um uh so it might drop a couple singles this year and then hopefully like the eps also working on a split with dude flame nice um yeah so like uh we've been working on that for the past like couple of years but haven't dropped it but i think we're gonna try and do like a run to like maybe like la san francisco do all that shit fly the band out there and um do that maybe in the new year if we drop the split um but uh yeah i've been busy as fuck like started that new band lice oh you're in lice i didn't even know that yeah yeah so gonna drop that tape probably like by the end of the month fuck um, yeah yeah so yeah lice i gotta talk about this for a sec because um basically like michelle and uh kieran from phantom crawl Mm -hmm. um they were and shay um they're they're just like a homie that just like pulls up to every fucking show there is um they're from brampton like we all were like uh we all talked about making another band just like a fun hardcore band um just do something on the side and uh we did like a few like band practices and like try to like make up some songs and then i was like fuck this i suck at doing this like i'm really have really bad short-term memory let's get in the studio for like one day and yeah. just record a whole demo and just like make every song on the spot so we did that we hit the studio i engineered like a whole tape for us um and uh yeah it's yeah so it's me michelle kieran jake and uh shay and uh yeah we just made we made four tracks in one day we got like a fucking power violence song on there we got um most of them are just kind of just like classic hardcore maybe like hardcore punk um and uh they're all just fun songs that we could just like play shows around locally mm -hmm. whenever we want maybe do a montreal show this year Fuck yeah. um maybe like half of us have our visas so like maybe like the other band members get the visas and we just do like some little runs in the states um but uh yeah we're trying to get that tape out this month just finishing the cover art all that shit um and uh yeah so a lot of work and mad busy um i've been working like crazy like from touring and shit you know just like my real jobs yeah i'm trying to save up for the next tour all that shit it's all out of pocket so y'all playing hold your ground too yeah that's gonna be a fun one i'm stoked you know that's that's where like 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 when you asked initially you're like yo is dear god a hardcore band i'm like like that like this is the type of shit that's like funny to me it's like i did not expect us to be on hold your ground but like we are yeah and it's and it's gonna <laughs> rip because it's like we're gonna play only the hardcore songs that that like i made with dear god um but like yeah that's gonna be a fucking fun time i was there last year um it was a great time i i i bought tickets for the after show with the uh, bulldoze bulldoze in yeah. brampton holy shit i got i got mateo a ticket for his birthday too um yeah we're, we're gonna go crazy for that bulldoze is definitely one of my favorite hardcore bands so like i never <laughs> thought they'd be playing in brampton i don't even know but, how they're gonna get like 
are they allowed to come over the border? We'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, who knows? I don't know. You never know what those are. Uh, those old school bands, like they've probably been through a lot back in the day. That's you, it. You never like, know, you never know who's through. got the felonies, right? Like, yeah, yeah, it's hard. Yeah, that's no shade at all towards bulldoze because, like, you we were talking about it the other day. Like, uh, bruiserweight guys, it's like you can get a felony for almost anything in the states. Like, yeah. it's very easy to get shit like that. <clears throat> um. So like it's just funny because we're laughing. We're like, who the fuck can even come over anymore? Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. It was uh, a <laughs> this year. Like, me and Mateo had to chill a lot because like we were trying to get our visas. So like we've right. been good boys this year. But <laughs> Mateo almost got a case. He had to beat that shit like a month before we went on tour. <laughs> but what the um, fuck? yeah. But uh. Yeah, we've been on our good behavior this year. You know, I've been uh, been going. What do you call it? Soft this year. Soft. Yeah. 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 No. No fighting. No. Uh, no drinking. <laughs> no much. drinking. No. Uh, yeah. No petty crimes. Petty, petty thefts and yeah. jaywalking. Or... Yeah. Nothing like that. No jaywalking. That's a big one. Yeah. That's a big one. Here, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I uh, feel like I feel like if you have a, some shit in the states, though, like it's easier to get to Canada than if you have some shit here and you're trying to get in the states. Like, well, like me and Mateo, like we had many discussions, being like, we gotta chill because, like, like the states does not play with that shit. You know what I mean? Like they, uh, like since nine eleven and shit. Like yeah, if you are if you are someone from out of there and you have some charges, like you're fucked. I hate the whole system with the U.S. and Canadians going over like it's <clears throat> just completely fucked um mm -hmm. which i've talked about so many times and americans don't realize it but it sucks for like because i don't need a visa but like four of my bandmates do mm -hmm. and two of them have it two of them don't so we've got to pay like a thousand dollars i think to get the other two mm -hmm. it's a lot of fucking money for a band that plays for a hundred 50 bucks a night yeah <laughs> like, yeah for real it's fucked up yeah you, you got to take a loss for that yeah so mm -hmm. to go play like a show that might do well in Brooklyn, you know, like, mm -hmm. but yeah, I've talked about it a lot. And I know that like every band feels that way when they're like, should we get the visas? What do we need to do? But I mean, I know my own's done it. You guys did it. Uh, it can be done. Offside did it. And it's fine. Yeah. As long as you have Jessa by your side, Jessa, Jessa from the, she's, dam damage control. She's a real one yeah yeah she's, she's, she's done a lot us. for us yeah she's helping us right now too mm -hmm. so shout out well, jessa shout out jessa shout out yeah. uh hold your ground <laughs> yeah let's go uh well sick i'll be seeing y'all at hold your ground then because um we play in the pre-show and i'm bringing a booth i have a beans and breakdowns booth coming okay. uh coming to the, the show hell yeah we'll kick it in brampton show you around old kick it in brampton old school styles yeah i mean it's like literally 10 minute drive from brampton or like from like my side of brampton from like mm -hmm. Lee. so show you around i know kevin's gonna want to show us brampton too because i've never been yeah yeah it's good time good hang you can get 40s there can't you yeah you can't get them in montreal no nah. yeah no at the lcbo you can get a 40 for sure what? yeah yeah i was drinking 40s at the uh, on the burb shoot <laughs> <laughs> Dog. Times. yeah you the only 40s you can get here is like uh like labad and stuff like that like it's not a true 40 yeah yeah i'm, I'm oh, i miss gosh. when you could get like uh you could get like corona 40s old english which mm -hmm. is like uh, uh cold 45s what was the one i used to get miller high life 40s yeah i would drink the old english um, at my shows when i was like in high school <laughs> jesus christ yeah <laughs> yeah dark times oh man on that note I really appreciated you uh, hanging out, Rob. This has been a lot of fun. Um, Good hang. I'm glad to finally meet you because I feel yeah. like we've maybe crossed paths before and just haven't been introduced. But uh, I just have one last question for you. Yeah, what's up? What's your favorite city for beans and breakdowns? What do you mean by that? <laughs> like best shows, best coffee experience. Oh. It can just be best shows if you want, whatever you how, how, It's however you feel. Mm. Just feel it out. I don't know, like, I haven't been exposed to too many cities, but, like, 
I, I don't know. Probably Montreal is probably probably the spot. I feel like Montreal has got a, a crazy hardcore scene. Montreal has got crazy food, crazy drinks, crazy people. Um, yeah, I mean, crazy like, people. I mean, Toronto's Toronto's good for all that shit too, you know. But um, Montreal is just that, but bigger, you know. Is like, that but bigger? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I feel like to, it feels like Montreal is bigger, but maybe just like the there's more cool spots in Montreal than there are in Toronto. You know, Toronto's big, but it's a lot of like you know dead zones. You know, there are. But, <laughs> you gotta like drive in between the cool shit. And yeah. Montreal, you just walk everywhere, and there's cool shit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I fucking love Montreal. My uh, my girl's always trying. She's like, yo, let's move to Montreal. It's so much cheaper. I'm like, you you're right, but like. It is true, I got though. my family here. I got, I just got so much shit here that like, I'm just like such a Toronto boy, you know, that I just like, I'm so used to it here. Like when I'm in Montreal, I love it. Like I party hard when I'm over there, but I'm such a foreigner, you know, I like, I like feeling like at home in a place where like I've, I've grown up in, you know, right, right. but like, I, I also like, I grew up like the house that I grew up in is like my parents still live in. I've never moved Besides from when I um, got out of high school and I moved out to Toronto, but I know Toronto because my cousins lived in Toronto. I was in Toronto all the time. Mm-hmm. Sister went to school in Toronto, lives in Toronto. So like Toronto and Brampton are, are so close that it's like living in Toronto is just like, it's pretty much living in Brampton, right? Like I'm still close to home, but I'm trying to get out to Montreal sometime, hopefully in the next few weeks, maybe we'll see. Oh, well, if you do hit me up because, uh, I mean, I'm sure there'll be something going on. You should come yeah. out. Oh shit! You should come out for the fucking uh, Madball show. Yo, what? There's a Madball show. Well, I think y'all. I think there's one also in uh, Toronto, but Rust is opening. Oh shit! I didn't know they're on tour like that. Shit. But there's one. It's Death Before Dishonor, Madball, and then in Montreal, uh, Offside, which Offside is like my favorite Montreal hardcore band. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, Shut Away and Bruiserweights opening. Holy shit. So, okay it'll be fun you should come yeah. out for that that'd be dope yeah, yeah, yeah i'm gonna look into that i'm gonna see if i can pull up well uh rob again thank you so much hope to see you soon uh but looking forward to to seeing that hold your ground yeah sounds good thanks bro appreciate Take you easy all right peace Thanks for listening to this episode of Beans and Breakdowns. I want to say a huge thanks to Rob for hanging out on the podcast. Be sure to check out the punchline from Dear God. Also check out music from Do Flame. Links to those are in the description of this episode. If you've enjoyed the podcast, please subscribe and leave a review. You can find out more information about the podcast by following us on Instagram at Beans and Breakdowns or on the web at beansandbreakdowns.com. Until next week, be sure to stay caffeinated and wake the fuck up.